Greetings. Today's show focuses on the reappearance of the black matte uh, Tesla Semi, as well as uh, five implications of the, tr of the Semi re returning, because we can now officially call it Black Semi 2.0. Also wanted to note that the silver vehicle has disappeared while the, the black vehicle has appeared. The second thing we wanted to review today is sort of strange doings in the stock price of Tesla, and we'll uh, get into that uh, on a time basis. Greetings, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. We're again at the Tyson's uh, corner Tesla facility in the Washington DC area. Um, the location is actually on something called Tyco Road. As you can see behind me, uh, we have uh, we have Model X and uh, or Model S and three with sort of lights on. And then directly behind me, you can see that the display is of the solar roof. Uh, interesting to note that the uh, roof display changed when Tesla was being sold with the solar roofs inside of the Home Depots, that was not there. So it's kind of an interesting uh, shift and change. Wanted to note that we do have a couple of ads per show about every five minutes. Would appreciate just watching for 10 seconds to help support the channel. We're also on Patreon, could use help there as well. So today's uh, show kind of focuses on the fact that there's been a reemergence or reappearance of the black semi or black matte semi. Now, we've decided to call this the 2.0 version because in this case, the distance from uh, the Los Angeles airport area or Hawthorne, California to Kettleman City is uh, 179 miles. So basically, when you add in the fact that the truck had to enter the, mar the mountains above Los Angeles, um, to head uh, north towards the Fremont factory. This means that this vehicle has gone from about a 200 mile range entity to now it's entered the 300 mile range, uh, possibly more. Uh, and there are several sort of hints that this is the case. The first uh, hint is the fact that uh, when this vehicle was charging up, it required five uh, inputs to the supercharger to go for the full charge. So in the previous iteration when we saw it charging, actually it was only using one port uh, to top off because it was coming through the mountains from the Gigafactory on the way to the Fremont plant. So what it looks like for this 2.0 version of the vehicle is that it has more range and therefore uh, needs more charging across uh, chargers. It's also interesting to note here that they chose to charge it up fully given that the distance from Kettleman City to the Fremont factory is only about 100 miles, but it was interesting that they did cho choose to go for the full charge. The next thing I wanted to cover is as to why this is a 2.0 is that it turns out that Tesla's uh, battery development calls for a 2% improvement on an annual basis, or sorry, a 5% improvement on an annual basis in battery density. Um, what's assumed is that uh, nothing can change except for just an improvement, but that improvement has tended to include a reduction in the amount of cobalt and increasing of the other materials inside the battery that would allow it to um, continue to improve on uh, battery energy density that it's providing. The next uh, issue that we cover here is the fact that uh, in the case of uh, version number two, this vehicle has not been traveling across the country and you'll notice by the thumbnail and images available over my shoulder that um, Elon and others have chosen to maintain a process where they're, uh, they're not making any real effort to allow this semi to be optimized when it comes to wind resistance, which is also one of the reasons why 
we're estimating that its primary function is to target the drainage market. So you'll notice that the, um, the gap between the top of the truck and the back of the trailer behind it, that gap represents rain resistance and can reduce the amount of range that vehicle has anywhere from five to 10 miles. So it's also interesting to note that even though there's a trailer that's a fit for the height of this vehicle, there has been no effort uh, on the part of Tesla to uh, sort of cover up that gap, either with a taller fairing or by changing out to the other um, trailer that's shorter. So it's a 53-foot uh, trailer that's behind it that's a standard size that would be uh, carried um, you know, by any vehicle. So I thought that was another interesting note about where we are in the process on this. The next note I wanted to make is that there was actually a mention of the fact that uh, the black or the black semi had only been seen um, once or twice at the charging facility in Kettleman City or the one nearby in Harris Ranch. And you know, I think that the photos that were not taken are a reflection of the fact that uh, there just didn't have to be uh, Tesla owners who were nearby to check it out. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that when it went, made this southerly journey that it was, um, in fact, stopping for a charge and that it just went at a time when there was no one around to uh, log the fact that it had been there. Um, this also confirms something else that we've been wondering about for a while, which is on numerous occasions, the, both semis have been spotted near the Gigafactory you know, in a storage facility in the form of warehouses in Sunnyvale, California. Um, based on the now upgraded vehicle coming from the Los Angeles facility, it looks like the initial work that was done at the design facilities in Los Angeles and then the continued um, head for trucks into Los Angeles to be upgraded suggests that there really isn't a, a place in the, in the uh, Bay Area or at the Gigafactory for development work on the truck right now, and it's being continued. Howdy. Hey, Good you? morning. How are you? Morning. Doing my Tesla show here, uh, but <laughs> All right, yeah. So the fact that the truck is um, making runs to the factory. We just had a Tesla employee arrive at 7 o'clock in the morning here in the Washington, D.C. area. That's who I said hello to. So the fact that the truck is making runs to the surface facility in Los Angeles, and uh, there's no... Uh, by the way, you guys are doing a great job. You know. <laughs> Thank you. The, the, the area is full of vehicles right now. I'm just wondering, are you guys going to sell those, or are you going to have to ship them to Europe to sell them? Because <laughs> no, they're all... They're all going out. They are going out, okay. Uh, and there's a lot more Model S's and X's too. I was surprised by that. I thought it would just be Model 3's that are moving out. Oh, yeah. But they're all trying to catch the, uh, the, the service. Year, the year-end. The year-end service. The year-end. Because there's no place to park back there. Every slot is <laughs> yeah. full. But you guys are doing a great job in terms of expanding where to park things in the interim. Oh, yeah. But, oh, but yeah. keep up the good work. I'm a stockholder, and we appreciate the hard work you guys are doing. Awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, the Tesla employee opening the door here was pointing out that we're seeing an abundance of vehicles. I've been watching this parking lot now for eight months, and I've never seen this many vehicles. And he indicated that these babies are all going out to catch the end of year uh, tax credit, $7,500 off. So um, we've got like almost no place for vehicles to park here. It's jammed, and uh, you know they're doing a great job of pushing them out. I have to admit, I was kind of worried about the number of cars I'm seeing here in the Rockville facilities and whether or not Tesla wouldn't be stuck with a lot of unsold inventory. But what's been confirmed by the, uh, uh, the manager of this store is that all the vehicles that we're seeing out here are accounted for in terms of pre-orders from customers and they'll be going out before the end of the year. So uh, for those of you wondering about where the stock price is going to end up, I think it should be solid based on the fact there are a lot of cars here in Rockville, as well as in Tyson's, confirmed by the, uh, the folks here at Tesla. So continuing in terms of our truck analysis, uh, by the way, I apologize. Anytime we get a, a few words from a Tesla employee, uh, it's nice to get that input and being able to understand better what's going on with the company. 
So to return to our discussion of what's going on with the trucks, it looks like all the development work is happening in Los Angeles at the service facility. Um, one of the secrets of Tesla we should all be aware of is anytime you see a Tesla vehicle moving or being sold, there's a constant development process going for every Tesla out there. And so what this means is that including the trucks, et cetera, there's battery improvements, there are other major improvements. There's about a 25% change in the vehicle every 90 to 120 days, and this involves all vehicles, and it seems that this is now involving the truck. So even though the outside of the vehicle may look the same, there are changes that are going on that are significantly impacting uh, overall developments on the vehicle, including improvements on things that were identified to be problems. So I've read a lot of stuff about, you know, the early versions of the Model 3 not being great. It ain't the same car. We're definitely on 2.0 Model 3s right now, heading for 3.0. Particularly, we're heading into that space when it comes to the battery. So uh, to finish up on our truck discussion in terms of the black matte finish today, the silver truck has now uh, disappeared. I believe it's getting an upgrade when it comes to batteries uh, in the Los Angeles area at the service facility. The black matte truck has now appeared and is now starting to make runs again. And as we shared previously, those runs are primarily uh, going to Drea's circumstances, either the port facilities or the companies that service those ports is the primary of where those are going. Um, I think it's awesome that the truck is back. Uh, we did have a viewer mention that you never see the silver and black semis at the same time, suggesting they've just been repainted and they're just one vehicle. I totally disagree. I do believe it's two different vehicles uh, and that you know they're out there performing in the circumstances that they should. Um, the final thing I wanted to sort of review today is for those of you who are in the options class and learning about how options are traded, I wanted to note there's a whole bunch of positive news on Tesla, but we seem to be maintaining our Friday history of the stock price declining. So as you'll notice, the 370 puts ended up being a terrific buy once again. Stock price ended up around 365, even though it had pushed up to 375 during the day. Um, obviously, the bad news when it comes to trade tensions with Mr. Trump and declining oil prices weighed on what happened with that stock price. And I just wanted to note that we're maintaining this down every Friday. Another trading note that you should note on Fridays, most people um, are fearful of taking over the weekend positions because you don't know what's going to happen over the weekend and the subsequent activity could end up being really bad news. So um, it's better to trade out of positions on a Friday, get back into those positions on Monday. You might miss, me, me, miss a bit of a gain, but you also might miss a terrific disaster that ends up destroying the positions that you had put in place uh, earlier in the week or even that Friday. Um, so I, uh, you know, so I, I think this is kind of an interesting phenomenon. Uh, the other thing to note is that uh, you know, reestablishing positions. You could also take a look at, did it make sense to hang on and get wiped out at the end of the day on a Friday or selling out of a position, reestablishing on Monday. And by tracking what happened with all the numbers, you could kind of assess whether or not this was a smart move uh, in, the, in the trading process. Um, I have to admit that, uh, just want to remind you, I just did my 20 leg lifts, heading for the vitamins, had a banana to start with some oatmeal and look forward to a good eating day in terms of good health maintenance. Um, I definitely wanted to just quickly walk you th guys through the parking lot as we're closing out today. Um, we're seeing a huge number of vehicles uh, that are here and they're said to be all spoken for by pre-orders uh, to make sure that the $7,500 tax credit is acquired. Um, so I'll sign off here. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, max gut, au revoir, le hitro. Hoda Hafez and all my Jamaican friends in Brother Donovan, enough respect, walk, good man. So uh, again, we're, in, we're looking in the service facility. Um, as you can see, we're talking mega numbers of cars that are sitting to the point where that Model X has to park 
in the parking lot. I thought this was kind of interesting to understand um, when the vehicles are being trucked in, how they're being managed in terms of, notice on the door handles, uh, the plastic that covers it. Also notice um, on the tail, uh, you know, there's a reduced chance of damage occurring here based on uh, how they're wrapped. Um, and as you'll see from our uh, Tesla fan insight posts on Facebook, we have a lot of footage of what's going on here as well. It's a rainy day, as you can see, in the Washington, D.C. area. Wanted to thank you again for joining us. Tschüss, Max. Gut. Au revoir. La hitro. Hoda hafez. And we look forward to our next conversation with you. Have a great day, and thanks for joining us once again. Have a really interesting show coming up next regarding the Gigafactory, and look forward to that.